big storms roll on through the Ohio Valley. And as we move into Wednesday, things spread out. We have a big severe weather day again with tornadoes possible, strong damaging winds as these storms bow out. A lot to talk about. Hey guys, I hope you're doing well and I hope you're safe. And you know, I was reading through some of the comments during the outbreak last night across Oklahoma, Kansas. We saw tornadoes into parts of Missouri, Nebraska, even further to the north too, into Iowa. And I think one of the most disturbing things that I found and the theme that I saw, and you may have seen it too, is the sore disappointment that people truly felt that they didn't get a tornado where they were or they didn't see a strong, severe tornado. I'm having a really hard time understanding this. I mean, I guess I understand that, you know, you want to see severe weather. It's all exciting and everything. But maybe I've just been in the business too long or I've just seen too many lives devastated by severe weather. I absolutely hate it. I don't hate much in life, but I hate severe weather. And it's because of the devastation that it causes. And I know there's going to be loss of life. It's never fun to watch. I mean, it really is disappointing. So let me know down below, what do you think it is? I mean, the meteorologist in me, I understand the excitement of it, but it's just, ugh, it's a touchy subject and I just, man, sometimes I just don't get it. All right, enough of that. Let's talk about what's going on because there is some severe weather in the forecast for Tuesday night across the Ohio Valley, an enhanced area of severe thunderstorms possible from the Storm Prediction Center, some tornadoes. So here's the future radar headed through the overnight showers and thunderstorms here across Ohio, Indiana, crossing the Ohio River into Kentucky and West Virginia. The good news is once we move into the overnight, these will start to weaken. However, you can't rule out a few isolated strong to severe storms, even some hail and an isolated tornado still on the table, but things will start to settle down some. Showers moving into the Appalachians as we move into the early morning hours of Wednesday, also across the Great Lakes. Cool up here into northern Michigan, but here's where the concern will be as we head into early Wednesday morning. We've got some heavy rain showers, it looks like, uh, from Nashville over to Knoxville, even up to the Tri-Cities here, and then north up towards Bowling Green. That looks to be the northernmost extent, everything kind of south of that. But then things start to get unstable as we head into the afternoon as low pressure moves back here across Missouri. These storms here, this is the area to first watch. They'll probably fire as we head into the late afternoon hours from southern Illinois, parts of Missouri, and then this pocket right in here. If we get some sunshine, we'll really destabilize fast. And now you're going to push storms into that very unstable atmosphere. Not only will you potentially see some supercells with some tornadoes, you'll see some strong hail, a lot of updrafts going on with all of that instability, a lot of buoyancy in the atmosphere. So big time rains, big hail possible, and then all of that pushes east as we move into Wednesday night into very early Thursday morning. So early Thursday morning, moving into eastern Kentucky, now into east Tennessee, down into northern Mississippi and Alabama, and then pushing off to the east. And that's some pretty heavy rain, too. And some lighter showers now back up across the Great Lakes from Illinois, from Chicago, north up into Wisconsin and across Michigan. And then the severe threat moves off to the east. Across the northeast, we could see some thunder as we head into the overnight hours, into early Wednesday from Rochester to Buffalo, even over to Albany, and maybe even into New York City, too, and along the Jersey sure down through philadelphia but these don't look too bad now i'll tell you you got to keep an eye on things as we head into the afternoon some of these storms here may try to get a little strong and those will settle down as we head into wednesday night and there's your bigger storms here going across the mid-atlantic down into virginia and north carolina as that pushes offshore the severe weather threat on wednesday stretching from the coast back across the mid-atlantic to the midwest all the way back as far west as iowa all the way down to Texas, and look, you can see that bullseye area, those places we've talked about from Kentucky, Tennessee, Illinois, southern Indiana, Missouri, Arkansas, even back into parts of Texas. The threat for tornadoes, certainly on the table. The biggest threat will be from Nashville, north up to Bowling Green, right along the Ohio River, and then again back into Missouri and uh, Illinois. As we head into the afternoon and evening hours, it'll start here across Missouri and then push off to the east. It's not a zero threat the further east you go. So once you get to what, Pikeville down to Knoxville, you get into the mountains here, things will become more stable just because of the cooler conditions into the mountains. But you can't rule out a few isolated tornadoes. And that can also be said for North Georgia, Mississippi, and Alabama as we move into late Wednesday night and Thursday morning. Hail will be possible too. The Storm Prediction Center has hashed out an area from West Virginia and Western Virginia, west across Kentucky and Tennessee. These areas could see some pretty decent hail, 
significance of veer is what that hash means. And look, the significant tornado parameter, if you get storms popping in this environment, these numbers are off the charts here across parts of Arkansas, Missouri, and Tennessee. Not a good sign as we move into Wednesday. The moisture will be around, and that means we'll have plenty of energy in the atmosphere. Dew points near 70 across Tennessee and Kentucky, uh, even back into Arkansas. We'll be in the 70s from Texarkana, almost to Little Rock, Memphis, even North Mississippi and Alabama, so some st- sticky air out there to fuel these storms. And as we move through Wednesday night into Thursday, everything pushes off to the south. So now the severe threat will be into parts of Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, even Georgia. The Storm Prediction Center highlighting this area, really from southern New Jersey, all the way along the coast south to Atlanta, and then along the Gulf Coast back into Texas for Thursday as our front drapes to the south. Now, as we move into the end of the week, these showers will push off to the east and off the coast as we move to Thursday. Things will turn cold, though. I'm going to say cold for May standards, so keep it relative here. Temperatures dropping will keep the clouds and the rain showers around the northeast. Another system will drop in through the Great Lakes as we head into Friday night into Saturday. That will be a reinforcing shot of some cold air. That'll bring another round of showers across Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, into Michigan. And then behind that, maybe, I'm going to go on a limb here, maybe a few flakes of snow mixing into the highest elevations in the Northeast sometime Sunday. Yes, it's going to be that cold. Uh, I mean, it's not going to be frigid cold. Here's a look at your temperatures on Sunday. I mean, look at these higher elevations. Probably not getting out of the 30s, up into the Adirondacks, the Catskills, and across the northern mountains of New England. And then as we head into the next week, the good news is this cold will lift out. Okay, so once we see that, temperatures across the east will warm up. And May is notorious for getting these cutoff lows that just get separated from the flow, which now is starting to move north into Canada, at least the driving force of the jet stream is. So look at this. This is something I want to watch as we head into next weekend, this pesky upper low that tries to get cut off and then meander. That's where the models have a hard time figuring out what's going to happen. Look at this. It's just all by itself down here in the Gulf. Then it wants to bounce back north. I mean, that's the tricky thing about these upper lows as we head into the spring. So we'll be tracking it. If you like this kind of stuff, I hope you'll subscribe as we track these crazy weather patterns. And I'm on X2. Connect with me there, WX Travis. I'll see you there, and I'll see you next time right here on YouTube.